HP is betting really, really big on absolutely huge printing presses. And we got Ben Worthen of the Wall Street Journal joining us now from San Francisco to tell us about these absolutely enormous printing presses. Tell us. They're enormous. How big are they, Ben? They're, I, I mean, they're bigger than yeah. Texas, they're, right? They're, they're so big that now these are, you know, when you think of a printer, you obviously think of that thing that's under your desk or on the, on the bookshelf that you probably haven't used much lately. Uh, these things are 72 feet long. Uh, they take up an entire warehouse floor. These are giant printing presses. These are uh, intended to replace the big manual offset printer lithograph machines that have long been used with plates and so forth to print books, direct mail flyers, shopping circulars, catalogs, and so forth. What, what HP is betting is that you, you can use shorter runs and you can customize by doing these digital machines. So rather than having to print 10,000 copies of the same circular, which you would if you have one plate and run it a thousand times, you could use this digital <clears throat> giant printer basically from HP to have each page be different so that Simon, you could get uh, a circular full of the products that you like to buy. I could get ones that are targeted to me and so forth. And I wouldn't have to see you know, all the products that you buy that I have no interest in. Hey, Ben, I got to ask you, because if this is the best product that HP has in its pipeline, I think things might be even worse than we think at HP. Uh, I mean, you look at this market, it, it's, it's a very specialized market, you know, um, commercial printing presses. This is what Kodak was betting its future on. Look what happened to Kodak. I mean, what kind of, what kind of return are they gonna, can they get on this investment? Yeah, well, so that's an interesting question. And let's, and let's uh, be clear that this is not, you know, all of HP, HP is a big company, so they've got servers that they're working on separately, different PCs and computers. The printer division, though, has been, it's, this is a, a division, people don't really think about it, they take it for granted, but it's generated more than half of the company's profits uh, for a very long time now. And so, you know, so they, they've sold about 50 of these things so far. This is a market that's growing at about 20% a year. Uh, all the people within the industry are convinced that over time, the, you know, the, the printing presses are, are mostly going to convert to these digital presses that are like HP, Kodak, like you said, has them as well. It's just going to take a while, and in particular, these, these cost you know, one to two million dollars each. And if you're a uh, you know, printing press that's been around for a long time, you may not be able to afford uh, the capital investment right now. That's but, a lot of money. You know, Ben. Yeah, That's go ahead. A yeah it's a lot of money, and to keep in mind, HP doesn't really make its profit by, you know, cashing that check for two million dollars. They'll make money by selling you the ink and uh, in, in the services. This is the classic HP, right? They give you the printer, and then they uh, sell you ink over time and, and make uh, make most of their profit that way. So it's the same model. Um, it's just on a much, much bigger scale. We're talking about ink cartridges that are in the gallons as opposed to, uh, you know, the inch or two. Hey, Ben, you know, obviously this seems like it's not going to be the, the solution to the fundamental problems in HP's printer business. I'm wondering, you know, with the revenues are declining there, or the, the growth rate is declining, the, the profitability is getting a little bit lower, what can HP do in that, in that core part of their business to sort of, you know, sort of get it growing again? Yeah, so broadly speaking, I mean, people at home are printing less. People in the office are printing less. Uh, this is in the U.S. Worldwide, you know, people who are just getting printers for the first time are printing more. But, you know, here in the U.S., people are printing less and we're consuming more stuff digitally. So that's, that's a problem for HP. You know, overall, their strategy is to try to come up with ways to get you, the consumer at home, to print more. Uh, for instance, maybe queue up your printer so that every morning you have your fantasy baseball statistics right there to take with you on the subway. In the office, what they're trying to do is instead of convincing people to print more, they're trying to sell services and that, you know, and software that, you know, manages the life of a document. So instead of me printing something and then giving it to Simon, um, it would just automatically route it to Simon uh, digitally, and of course HP would make a lot of money by selling you that software. What they say is that this area, these big printing presses, is the great untapped area for HP and digital printing. You know, 99% of books and similar materials are still done on manual presses, and if you broaden it out to catalogs and photo books and all of these new emerging areas, it's still 90 something percent is done analog on old style presses. And so, you know, even though 
it seems like it's a hard sell and mm. you know they've only sold 50 or so of these you know they look at this as the area that they can it's a greenfield that well, they think that they can move well, into I, hey good good luck to them i you know yeah. if it works it works I, mean, I gotta point out though that there's no way a 72 foot long printer however digital it is is getting in my apartment it just won't fit so <laughs> that that is a bit of a problem anyway thank you very much ben worthen of the wall street journal out in san francisco